Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Today's video, we are going to be looking at the relegation battle, of course, with the Premier League returning this past weekend. We are heading into the proper business end of the season. It's the final running of this campaign and the relegation battle in particular is really heating up and we're going to be taking a look at uh, who's involved, what the running looks like for each team that's involved, and then give my personal opinion and predictions on what is going to unfold as the season draws to a close. But before we go any further and talking about all of that, I would like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both of you always going to be greatly appreciated. Uh, but for now, let's get into the video. Um, so if we take a look at the table instantly, we can see that... Uh, the bottom three currently occupying the relegation zone right now are Watford, Burnley and Norwich. But I believe that the teams that are also in danger are just above them. Everton and reading on the table upwards is Leeds and I would say Newcastle still aren't particularly safe. But they are, they are looking uh, pretty okay right now uh, where they are but they could still be dragged into this relegation scrap um if you look at uh, the, the the stats of each team uh norwich have played 30 they've won four they've drawn six and they've lost 20 which gives them a grand total of 18 points i believe they're gone i believe norwich are simply gone they're in abysmal form as it is uh, they rolled the dice early with changing their managers to Dean Smith uh, from Daniel Farga, which hasn't worked. Um, but in typical Norwich fashion, I wouldn't rule them out instantly yo-yoing back into the Premier League like they have done for previous years. I would not, uh, I would not back against uh, us seeing Norwich in the Premier League, um, not next season, of course, but the season after. So. That could definitely be the case if you're a fan of the Canaries. Um, Burnley, they've played 28, they've won 3, they've drawn 12 and they've lost 13, which gives them a grand total um, of uh, 21 points. And they've got two games in hand over the rest of them. One that's going to be played tomorrow, which is going to be a very uh, intriguing game against Everton. Uh, but they have two games in hand. Over over the rest of them that are down there, they have they are apart from Crystal Palace and Brighton, the draw specialists of the uh, Premier League this season. They've got the second worst goal scoring record though, and that's really been um, what their season's been about. Really, they picked up so many draws, and it's hindered them so badly this season because. They've not had a consistent enough goal scorer to turn those draws into wins. Their defensive record for a team that's battling relegation that's down there is actually fairly mediocre in terms of that. They're actually sat mid-table in terms of their defensive record. It's actually not that bad, um, but it's just been their goal scoring. They've just not managed to score enough goals, like I say, to turn those draws into wins. And everybody's backing... Burnley to pull off another great escape. We wait and see. Watford played 30, won 6, drawn 4, lost 20, giving them a grand total of 22 points. Of course, they've changed their manager a couple of times this season. We, uh, they've got, they went from uh, Claudio Ranieri recently, of course, to uh, Roy Hodgson. A manager with Premier League experience, knowledge, knows the Premier League inside and out. Could a Roy Hodgson masterclass be incoming? I don't know, man. I don't know. They've got, they've got, they've got a, a decent enough squad to be fighting relegation. I think they've got some decent uh, players in there. Roy Hodgson will know how to get the best out of them. He's been in this situation with Palace and other clubs multiple times. He knows the Premier League, like I say. Just be interested to see if that actually uh, comes about. Uh, reading on the table, Everton played 28. So they do have a couple of games in hand as well over the other teams. Won 7, drawn 4, lost 17 and have 25 points. You've got Leeds with 31 games played, 7, draw, uh, seven wins, 9 draws, 15 losses, 30 points in total. Uh, so they're kind of waiting on the other teams to sort of catch up with them in terms of the number of games played. 
and Newcastle played 30, won 7, drawn 10, lost 13, 31 points accumulated for Newcastle. Obviously, they went on a good run uh, before the international break hit and that helped them immensely get out of the drop zone and out of this seemingly battle. But I don't think they're entirely safe yet. I'm going to put that on record. I don't think they're entirely safe yet. If you look at the fixtures, the run-in, it makes it interesting reading. Watford right off the bat have Leeds, so that's already a bottom of the table clash there. Brentford, who have seemingly done enough to survive. Manchester City, who are battling for, um, for the Premier League title, of course. Burnley, that's going to be a massive game, you'd imagine, between two sides that are going to be in and around the, the relegation scrap. That game could be very, very important as to decide the fate of both teams, maybe. Um, and then Palace, Leicester, and then the final game of the season against Chelsea. Burnley start off uh, their, their run-in um, tomorrow, like I say, against Everton. That is a massive game where I fear that if Everton lose that game, that really drags them into it and they're in serious danger then. Uh, whereas, obviously, it could be uh, the start of a get-out-of-jail-free cause uh, for, uh, for Burnley. And then they've got Norwich, another bottom of the table clash. Of course, that could really seal... Uh, Norwich's fate almost whilst also helping Burnley if that is to be the case that they win then they've got West Ham Southampton West Ham uh, obviously challenging for top four Southampton safe not really challenging for, for much so that could be a game they look at as potentially getting something out of that they usually wouldn't then Wolves Watford again big one Villa Spurs, Newcastle, big games coming up for Burnley overall. Not the most trickiest of run-ins, but also not the easiest. Everton, like I said, have Burnley, Manchester United, top four still relatively on for United. That could up, that could be something that they're worth playing for. Leicester are safe, not really challenging for much. That could be something that they look at and maybe think they could get something out of that game that they otherwise wouldn't. Liverpool challenging for the title, Chelsea maintaining their top four status, Leicester again because obviously one of those two games uh, was a rearranged game, and then Brentford, Arsenal and Crystal Palace, that is to be decided when that game is going to be played because uh, of obviously the FA Cup that Crystal Palace are involved in. Home games could be seen as a way of staying up for Everton, their home form isn't Massively terrible, it's been their away form that has been, but at the same time, you wouldn't put it past this Everton side with the current form that they're in and the way they've been playing to really mess this up for them. Leeds have Watford away, Palace away before a home tie against Manchester City, Arsenal away, Brighton at home, Brentford away, and then Chelsea to be played in and around there somewhere um, because obviously, again, Chelsea's commitment to the FA Cup. Uh, means that that game had to be rearranged. So again, not the easiest, but not the best running either for Leeds. But I think with the past few results that they've picked up, they should be pretty much safe. Newcastle have got Wolves away, Leicester at home, Palace away, Norwich at home, Liverpool at home, Manchester City away, uh, Arsenal at home, and Burnley away on the final day of the season. That Burnley game could be massive for one or even both of those clubs as to who stays up, who doesn't, and uh, whichever one of them stays up because, like I say, they could still be in and around that bottom three come the end of the season. So that could be a massive, massive final day uh, game that sees this relegation scrap go down to the wire. So they've got some interesting games. Some very interesting games coming up. Now, of course, if we're looking at the teams that are a little bit safer or considered safer, then you obviously look at Newcastle. 31 points. They're nine points away from the drop zone. They are pretty much there, in all honesty. They're pretty much safe. I just think they need a few more points, maybe, to confirm and uh, restore their Premier League status for yet another season. Uh, running is not the best. Their running is definitely not the worst. I think their running... We'll easily see them get about nine, maybe ten more points overall. And that pretty much uh, will obviously get them to that magic 40 points number. Uh, the typical benchmark usually that means Premier League survival. 
We're not going to uh, uh, ignore the point, obviously, that money had anything to do with it. Of course, money did. The big January transfer window that Newcastle endured uh, uh, a, a, a few months ago has definitely helped them get out of a massive hole. But, of course, you still need the manager. You still need uh, the players to all come together for the same cause and still manage to work on a way to get out of it. And that's what Newcastle have done these past couple of months. Leeds, very similar, but very recently, of course. Uh, I think their recent form has helped them get out, a bit of, get out of a bit of a hole as well. Seven points from a possible nine. Um, that certainly boosted their survival bid as well. I think when you look at it, um, you know, I think the change of manager has helped them a little bit. I don't think it's uh, had quite the hit the ground running effect that they would have hoped it would have had, but he's still been okay, all things considered. I don't know if they would have survived uh, under Marcelo Bielsa or won some of the games that they have done uh, since then under him, but they they saw fit to do it and they are probably going to survive. They are very close. Of course, they're still waiting for the teams to play catch up with them in terms of the games played. Um, but I think that they should be safe and see their Premier League status like Newcastle's secure for another season. It's when you look below them two teams that I think you start to worry a little bit. Um, obviously Watford currently in the relegation zone right now, but I'm actually backing them because I've got a sneaky feeling that Hodgson, given his experience, given his knowledge of the Premier League and given everything that goes about with being Roy Hodgson, um, may actually see his side safe and secure. I can actually see that happening. I think I think that maybe they can get about nine, maybe ten points from their remaining games. And I actually think that that will be enough to see Watford secure and safe in the Premier League again. I genuinely think that Roy Hodgson could pull off some sort of great escape here. And... Um, and, and see Watford safe and secure for next season in England's top tier division. I genuinely could. I could see Burnley doing it because everybody basically tips Burnley to pull off a, a madness and survive in the Premier League again, like they have done for numerous years that they've been in England's top flight division because it's Sean Dyche and they just seem to turn it on when it matters most and manage to survive relegation. But if you dance with the devil of relegation too long, eventually that devil will definitely get a hold of you. And that is what I fear for Burnley this season. Whilst it wouldn't be a complete shock to see them survive, I genuinely think that relegation will probably get them this season and that will happen to them, I think, this season. I think that uh, tomorrow's game against Everton is going to be massive. I think they could really drag Everton into the in, into that pit of relegation uh, with, with a win and I think they'll, they'll, that they'll actually do that. I genuinely think Burnley will beat Everton tomorrow. But I, I just think that it won't be enough to help them survive. I think Watford will get out. I think Everton will be dragged in. And it's just simply the reason on Burnley's point that they just don't score enough goals. Like, yeah, they'll have a game or two where they will, but they just don't score enough goals as evident in the way that they've got the second worst goal scoring record in the Premier League. And like I say, if they had a consistent enough goal scorer, some of those draws that they picked up this season may have actually turned into wins. And then you could be looking at saying, well, Burley definitely will survive for this season. I just don't I just don't think they will, although it wouldn't be that big of a shock if they did. And as I've touched upon numerous times with Everton, they're the ones I feel for most. And don't get me wrong, as a Liverpool fan, it is funny and enjoyable to cast your eye down the Premier League and see Everton battling to survive down there. But as we know, as Reds fans, there are much more bigger things to worry about. There are much bigger fish to fry, so to speak. The focus would rather be on uh, Liverpool competing on multiple different fronts rather than what's happening across Merseyside. But at the same time, it is quite funny and enjoyable to watch Everton struggle down there. Like I say, if they lose to Burnley, which I predict they will, then that's the biggest indication for me about their season of them being done and dusted. I think that they'll be dragged right into the depths of it and I don't think they'll manage to survive. I think with the games that they've got coming up, particularly the ones against Leicester, Liverpool, Arsenal and Chelsea, I wouldn't bet against them getting anything from those games. I think uh, that's going to be games where they're, they're, they're lost before even kicking a ball. 
Ones against Brentford and Palace could be interesting because those two teams really don't have much to play for. So maybe they could get something there with them obviously playing for something and those two teams are not. The United game could go any which way. It genuinely is... It genuinely is a horrible place to be in, a horrible scenario for Everton to be in. But when you're a toxic and poorly run club the way they are, do you really expect anything less? It, it was the biggest shock in Premier League history if they were to go down. Don't get me wrong. No one expected Everton to be in this situation at the beginning of the season, regardless of who they had as manager, regardless of anything. But they've had so much money pumped into it that... It would be a shot. It genuinely would be a shot. I genuinely believe Norwich are gone. I don't think there's anything again uh, to say about, about Norwich here. I think their form has been abysmal in recent games. I think they've got the worst goal scoring record in the Premier League overall. They've got the second worst defensive record overall. They they're gone in my opinion. Like I say, the likelihood is they'll bounce back for a couple of seasons' time. But until then, they're down in the Championship yet again. I think Burnley are gone, like I say, scoring-wise, just not there. I don't. I think you're down to the devil too much. Eventually, he'll get you. Burnley are my second team to go down. And then finally, I think Everton are to be relegated. Maybe a bit bold. Maybe not the most popular choices. Maybe because it is Everton and they, on paper, do have the squad to help them survive. But I think after what I've seen with Frank Lampard, after what I've seen... Uh, than play these past few weeks after everything that's, go that's going on and going on around them and the future and their running and so on and so forth. They could survive based on simply there are three worst teams in them, but I'm actually backing Watford to get out of it and Everton to be drawn into it. So that's just my predictions. Those are my thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions as this guy. I want to know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Who do you see surviving the relegation fight? Who? Uh, what are your own thoughts on the relegation situation right now? Who do you see surviving? Who do you see falling victim to that relegation devil? Who is going to be playing their football in the championship next season? I'd love to know your thoughts, your comments, opinions, predictions. Whatever you want to call it, down below in the comment section, because I'm sure it'll make an interesting reading. Otherwise, hit that like button on the right. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new or want to see more content like this. Both things always and forever be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video, and I will see you all again soon in another video.